Okay, we're up to doing the, the J3 chip. There it is there. The source in the J3 port there. This is a little black cover you pull off nice and easy. Okay, the six bolts take off there, they're 5.5 mil. Just used a little socket. Then, as the instructions say, use a flat blade screwdriver to scrape off all the clear lacquer from the terminals here. I found the bottom side was quite hard to get to till I realized I was meant to take off the bottom cover as well. Which I couldn't see any screws to do, but I just had to very carefully lever it here. Because it was a bit stuck. Then that comes off. Makes it a hell of a lot easier to get to that. Do the same thing here. Very carefully. Get off all the clear lacquer. I'm not done, as you can probably see. Once it's good, sand it. There's plenty of instructions to do this, but there's no videos, so just thought I'd add this in real quick. Once that's all cleaned up, yeah, sand both sides with 600 grit sandpaper. Then the chip goes in, whatever fucking way it goes. We'll figure that out. Kind of just made a mess and did not have 600 grit sandpaper, so I used 400 carefully. But before I put all the panels back together, I will just test that it's actually going to run correctly and I don't have any issues with the fuel pump running continuously or anything. Should be good. Right now I've just put some electrical tape just to hold the chip in. It's pretty snug in there but I'll make sure with vibrations and all that it can't come loose and it will also protect the little, the little ends on it just in case anything moves around and shorts out. Looks pretty rough but we'll see if it works. ELECU is installed, batteries reconnected, time to try to start it for the first time. Um, was good so far, fuel pump primed but then stopped, not running continuously, which I read can happen if you have connection issues. Let's see if it starts with an ELECU with a J3 chip installed. Oil pressure sender removed. After the wires unplugged, one and one sixteenth socket goes on, but 
that little terminal sticks out and then you can't put the socket on so I just bent it because I'm dodgy I know that you've been then I'll bend it back and hopefully it doesn't break right. there's the original fuel pump and there's the Bosch 023 obviously there's some issues with them in there I don't know if I can cut this bottom off here I've looked I found a picture of someone else who's done it and it looks like they've just cut the bottom off so I'll mess around for a bit and see what I can figure out to try to make that fit yeah see I've had to bend the hell out of that it's like Four centimeters too long, but we'll see if that works. So this didn't fit back in the tank properly with that hanging down, so because I'm very dodgy, I just stuck it in a vise and wiggled it till it broke off. Let's try again. Injectors are next. I've never changed injectors, but I'm pretty sure the fuel rail has to come off. Then the connectors, and then the injectors can come out. And there is the oil feed line, which I've installed already before the turbo and just blocked off. Now I've started and ran the car and there's no leaks here or at the sender. So that's all good. You can kind of not really see it, but... There, there you go. Time for the injectors to come out. I believe the fuel rail has to come out so there's clearance, which means I'm doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bolts. This particular one here is underneath this loom, which is connected in there. So you just need to pop that out. And there's one screw in the back of the mount for this little regulator business. They're all surprisingly tight, but they come out easy once they're cracked. I think they've got thread lock on them. And then, it's just a matter of taking out these. And... Try not to lose them like that. Managed to get that off and just pissed out all the fuel that was in the rail. But yeah, that should be pretty simple from here. Injectors are out and they are. pretty filthy gives you an idea anyway
So that's the manifold side. That's the uh, fuel rail side. Little side by side comparison. The original 19 pound or whatever it was, and the Bosch 968 42 pound. See, that's a single spray jet and has four. And the 42 is physically smaller, which is interesting. All back in. Bit fiddly to get them all back in. You need them all to be sort of lined up. So you need an extra set of hands. But there you go.